Welcome to Chop and Brew, everybody. I am Chip Walton. I'm Michael Dawson. I'm Ted Weidman. <laughs> All right, so we did an episode, episode number six. We called it How to Grow Hops at Home, part one, with the promise or assumption that we would have parts two, three, and four throughout the mm -hmm. summer. What the we, hell happened to that, Chip Walton? Yeah, we have failed on that. We have been, it's been pointed mm -hmm. out in the intersphere that we've failed on that. So. Randomly, Mike and I are shooting another episode, another Brew Day episode, and Ted stopped by. So I figured, what the heck, let's let's talk about hops. That's what's about to happen here. We're going to go over mid-season, late-season hops, where they are, and where you might be in the next step of your thing. So uh, stick around for the other side of the title card that says, How to Grow Hops at Home, Part 2. <laughs> Blam. other side of the title card. I can tell you first and foremost that I failed and I'm not afraid to admit it. My hops that you saw me plant in episode 6 in those barrels which I basically only planted for the sake of showing people kind of how to plant. I didn't actually want them and I think Karma knew I didn't want them because it didn't let me have them. You're faking it. I planted them so late in the season. It was like May-ish I think and then it straight up rained and was about 50 degrees for a month here in the Twin Cities and it they just never happened. I don't know if I drowned them out. There was never enough warmth and dryness. It was a hard season, man. Yeah, it so as, as they might follow up, it was a hard season. I sorry, I failed you. What I showed you how to plant is legit, but I have nothing to update you on other than like two plastic barrels that have like a couple of sprouts and then cracked out. So Ted, I believe, had better luck this year, and everybody wants to know how Ted stuff's going. You guys have been leaving <laughs> comments all over that episode, so tell us what's up, man, out in the out in the the west side. The Westland. Yeah, they're doing good. Um, all the plants, pretty much, on their fourth season, are as full as they've been. All of them have cones now. One of them is uh, a little bit further ahead. The the Centennial's a little bit further ahead than all of the rest. Um, we picked some hops the other day. They're good. I mean, they're probably got three, four weeks on them and they're ready to, to throw into a kettle if I want to wet hop something. The first year that I planted in Chop and Brew 6. The starter the plant. The starter plant. Yeah. That one ended up dying. Oh, crap. Yep. Windstorm. It was the windstorm. Yeah. It just got uh, beaten up in the wind and it died, but the rhizome that we planted okay. um, is probably, I don't know, six, seven feet tall. But the other ones are what? Like 20? They're, they're maxed 14. out? Yeah, they're maxed out. Okay. They're bushy at the top. I should be getting a pound, a pound and a half per plant. Pretty easy. Up here, upper Midwest, when are you looking to harvest and what are you looking for to show you that? A lot of people have asked, like, how do I know? I followed what you guys said. I have no idea. And you can definitely do it too early and you can definitely do it too late. What's kind of the sweet spot for a uh, general rule of thumb for most varieties? Um, that you found? That I found? I was pretty apprehensive about harvesting the first time. I mean, I was really excited, man. I had my own hops. I can't wait to get them off the vine, but I don't want to mess them up. And I had a lot of apprehension about that. And I read some forum posts and talked to some people, and they said basically when they're, uh, they feel like a crunched up ball of tissue paper. Oh. And they're springy. They're right. dry and leafy like that. When you squeeze them and they don't stay flat and moist, but they kind of like... They spring back. Okay. Yep. Um, when you tear them in half, you want to see the yellow lupulin glands. Um, that yellow resin is going to be really sticky. Yeah. Um, you know, the hop harvesters and growers will get a bunch of them, roll them around in their hands, and they'll get that sticky resin. Um, we call it the sticky icky. The sticky icky. <laughs> yeah. And the rule of thumb I had always heard and read a couple times, and I used, it's not the yellow of like, can't even think of a bad example of it, but it's not like light sissy yellow it's like that intense they called it highway line mm -hmm. yellow that almost like bordering on orange mm -hmm. kind of yellow if you watch like a channel two or the nature channel and see the bees with all the pollen on their their backsides that's what it mm -hmm. looks like it's that really bright really sticky saturated. stuff yeah. but one of the things i found after harvesting a few years is that when you grab the hop cone between your fingers kind of pluck it it'll come off the vine easy mm -hmm. yeah it's just gonna pink it's gonna fall right off I was expecting the aroma like when you get a bag of hot pellets and you have that really dank rich yeah. I never have that it's just not as concentrated nope. yet there's still so mm -hmm. much more leaf matter going yep. on it smells like and it hasn't been dried yet yep. either you've so you've got all that kind of vegetal moisture I think 
playing a big part of what you smell. You pretty much, like you said, rip it in half, just, you know, like really tear, torture it, basically, and you'll get that smell. Yeah, pulverize your fingers, and uh, it's... Yeah, that's uh, better than torture. To pulverize it? Torture that! <laughs> yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Beep! We're out of time. So how's yours going, Dawson? <laughs> And you, I yeah. fell victim to the same windstorm that claimed some of Ted, Ted's hops. I, I made a good faith effort, even though I, uh, at, at the start of this year's season, I hadn't used up last year's crop entirely. So I strung them up, and then the big wind came and blew them down, and I was gone a bunch this summer, been busy, never strung them back up. So things have gone kind of feral, but I'm still getting <laughs> cones. <laughs> I don't know if uh, if when Chip so cruelly robbed you of your opportunity to speak, Ted, if you were going to go on about other signs of when to harvest. I use I use the spring test and the oil test, the, the sticky icky test. I also I actually also go by aroma uh, a fair amount because you're right, they're not going to be as concentrated. But especially if you're going to use the hops for oils, like I usually do for the late hopping and dry hopping, you want those oils to be present you want them to be at a good concentration before you pick the hop if you pick them too early they're not going to be as intense um the earliest i've ever picked hops is mid-august mm -hmm. and okay. usually just like in my microclimate for whatever this is worth i usually pick them in the last two weeks of august sometimes into september but usually by then they're getting a little past their prime for me they start to get too papery there's a lot of browning that goes on yeah it depends a lot on climate yep. too right because if it's if it's moist then the harvest can go into september yep. but as dry as it's been right now it would probably be within the next couple of weeks for me at least and one thing i just learned last night was that a lot of the hops go by the the sun and the amount of daylight they get mm -hmm. so as the days start to shorten they go into more of a fall mode where it's spending more of its energy into maturing those flowers yep and you know, as those flowers mature, you know, so the, the amount of daytime and the weather is going to have something to do with the harvest. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the same date, obviously, from year to year, close enough if the climate's mm -hmm. relatively similar, but um, it's going to vary a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to go grab some cones and see if we can have a teachable moment. What? Nice. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get some centennials. We'll take them back into the yard and we'll stand around and look at them. When I'm looking at my plants, they're never, well, some of them are this low, but. Usually what I'll do is I'll, I'll grab them like this. And when I was talking about pulling them, mm -hmm. basically just, you know, kind of get them like that. Mm -hmm. And they should just pop off. Pop off. I mean, yeah. That one, that one was really good. This one, yeah. not ready. It's too much. There's too much there. Mm -hmm. yeah. See these, you can start to see that lupulin right there. But these are going to get a lot more if I let them go. Yeah, uh, you can even tell just mm -hmm. by the look that they're still a little they're spongy. They're still green. They're still pretty, pretty moist. Oh, I can smell it though. It smells kind of like, uh, kind of like unsweetened lemonade. Yeah, I get um, lemongrass yeah. from these from these particular centennials. Yeah, they're gonna be nice. Despite the neglect. One visual thing I try to look for is the tips of the, the leaves will start to brown a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's usually when I, you know, I'll watch it, you know, I'll go out there every day and water them and fertilize them and blah, 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 whatever. But as soon as I see the, the hop cones at the top really start to turn brown on the outside, that's when I'll start checking relatively regularly, every day, every couple days, and try to plan my, because my life is so busy, I have to plan my harvest, usually at night. Last year I was harvesting from you know, five o'clock until two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You know, two nights a week and brutal. Yeah, it was bad, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So we're gonna try to do a wet hop episode at Ted's house. We're gonna try to take them straight from the vine into the brew kettle and kind of wrap about things we've learned about that process over the last couple of years. But if you're gonna pick yours and dry them, I guess this might as well be as good a time as any to talk about it because between he and I and maybe even you, we have pictures to cover that. We may not see it in video throughout this season, this year, 2013. Because watching hops dry is not fun. It's like a boy, uh, a watched hop will never de-moisturize, will never dehydrate. So what is the most easy Spartan way of drying your hops for people? What I found, and I think the same thing you did, uh, I was told you just kind of get a window screen 
and put it horizontally. I would use just bar stools as the end pieces to make it kind of like a hobby horse. Put that screen down and I just pour those freshly picked hops all over it. Try not to let them layer. You want them to be single layer. And then you just point. I would kind of position a floor fan kind of diagonally blowing up through it and put it on about two. Don't put it on three or any setting that will actually blow them off of the screen I found. Um, the point is you want air moving across them and you want it in a fairly dry environment. I've heard people drying them in like the loft of garages. I've heard of people just straight up drying them in the garage like Ted here, right? That's what you've done. Yep, I take all of the windows, out, window screens out of my house. I take my There's wife. There's bugs everywhere, but yeah. the hobs are excited. the windows closed. <laughs> um, I take my, my wife likes to dry her laundry rather than using the dryer. So she has one of those scissor drying racks. Mm -hmm. So I take both of those out of the basement. She's a sweetheart. And I just lay the window screens on those. I just put a fan in the garage and wow. blow it around. Mm -hmm. So you've got four or five layers going at once. Oh yeah. That's awesome. That's smart. I also, when we used to work in Northern Brewer, remember that year, I rigged up the ghetto box. I took a giant cardboard box, put all the wet hops in it, and I put holes in one end to kind of like make it a filter. And then I blew a small desk fan through the box and I would just shake it like every 10 minutes. And it actually worked. It was kind of a crazy thing. I can't remember why I did it at work instead of home, but that was kind of funny. I remember that. So you could try that. I don't know. Ghetto box it. Ghetto box it. Ghetto box it. How's your, what's your drying method? I Mr. do the same thing. I use screens from windows, sawhorses in the garage, <laughs> box van pointing up. Go through them. I think uh, you want to keep them out of the sun. Heat is okay when you're drying them, but you, you don't want to expose them to sunlight. Okay. And then if you Google, you know, if you're harder core than us and you want to make what's called a host, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of contraptions that people, homebrew talk or AHA forums, like people build all these contraptions to like flash dry them quickly, but you know, this is the way we go. And then if you can get a vacuum sealer, pull all the air out and vacuum in like one ounce mm -hmm. increments. You know, the ghetto way is just getting two plastic, uh, say one sandwich bag, squeeze all the air out, zip it up, put in another one and do that. But theoretically, if you can't vacuum seal them, you probably want to try to use them pretty quickly, right? Within a month. I We're bought so... a vacuum sealer after I think two seasons in this house and it paid for itself yeah. really fast because if you have more than one mature vine, you're going to be getting more hops than most brewers will be able to manage in a reasonable amount of time. And if you're not vacuum sealing them, they're just going to deteriorate. Yeah. After you harvest them, after they're dry, put them in the freezer, get them out of the light, get them mm -hmm. fro freeze them. Um, for some reason this year, I had probably about a third of the vacuum sealed bags, the vacuum broke. So I had a bunch of homegrown hops where the vacuum was broken in about February. I just basically pulled them all out, set them on the table, wrote a really hoppy recipe, basically just use them all. Mm -hmm. You know, because whatever, they're not going to last all that Imagine much longer. That. That's strange, huh? <laughs> how many hop, how many ounces of hops do you have from 2012? Still? Yeah. A lot. How many do you have? Uh, they're all my homegrown hops from 2012 yeah. are gone. Oh, good I, for you. I, yeah, I, I have a bunch of boughten hops. Boughten, 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 and broughten. Mine's still. I've got a keg, a little dorm freezer that's still completely full, like vacuum sealed full. I've got Chinooks from you, Centennials from you. I've got Dono yard hops from 2011. I feel a freezer cleaner beer coming on. I think that's about it, man. Yeah. You know. We're good. You just saw a lot of pictures. Not the most interesting episode, but. Excuse my reach. Yeah. I gotta turn off the burner. Woo! <laughs> All right, so we have to get back to the episode that we actually came here to shoot. Um, but yeah, Ted, awesome that you were in the house. Mike, awesome. Doctor, doctor. Doctor, doctor. doctor. We will try to follow this up with a, a third part where we are fresh hot brewing, throwing them straight into the kettle off the bind. Maybe some tips and techniques, maybe a little hot pong, maybe a little barbecue. I don't know, I might be writing checks I can't cash, but eh, it's the internet. What are you going to do? Chop for chop! Roof roof for roof. Roof. Hop for hop! That too. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Nice.
Um, yeah. Title card. <laughs> Teachable moment. So thanks Spongy. for <laughs> thanks for it's the moist. icky sticky. <laughs> thanks for the teachable <laughs> moment. My hands still smell awesome. Um, yeah, this that isn't the most be taken way out of context. Yeah, this obviously isn't as well polished as the first episode. Ghetto box it. Ghetto box it. Ghetto box it.